Hi, my name's Danny Hopkins and I'm here at Britpart in Shropshire with Managing Director Paul Myers. Hello, Paul. Hi. So, Paul, um, what have we got here, these electrical gizmos we've got here? What are they? Okay, this is a kit to uh, convert a Discovery Free uh, for my car, which doesn't have the remote-controlled um, fuel-burning heater to a remote-controlled one. Brilliant. So, in practice, what will that mean for somebody who fits it? Basically, press that button while you're having your breakfast on a cold, frosty morning, yep. and the car will start to warm itself up before you actually get into it. Fantastic. Does it do anything else? It's also a tracker, so you can actually uh, see where your car is as well if you happen to lose it. But it doesn't make the tea? Unfortunately not. Oh, fair enough. OK, well, to find out exactly how to fit one of these, let's go over and see Martin in the workshop. OK, so the first job we need to do is remove the grill and this headlamp. So the grill is just held with two clips at the bottom and then four along the top. Steve's going to take that away from me. So now we can remove the headlight, which is held in place with two metal clips. You just slide up like that. Line the holes up. And the headlight will slide forward. And then disconnect the big multi-plug on the back of the unit. Then we can place the headlamp aside. So once the headlight's out, take the connector and you're looking for the blue wire with a pink trace. And it's this wire that we're gonna tap into so that the fuel burning heater can be fired up using the third button on the remote. But first, we need to mount the module and route the wiring to make sure everything's in the right place. So the first thing we need to do is position where the connector for the main wiring harness needs to end so that we can then route the wires away from it. So this is that wiring harness. It looks a bit daunting, but you only need four wires to run the fuel burning heater. The rest of them are auxiliaries, which you can use later on if you want to add any extra accessories. So the plug needs to end where we're going to fit the module itself, which is on top of the fuse box lid. So if we position that there, we can then run our four wires away from it. So the first wire we're going to run is the blue one down to the headlight. So as long as we make sure there's enough slack on that to solder in afterwards, that's fine. We can just leave that there for now. The second wire is this green one. That's what's actually going to fire up the fuel burning heater. So in order to fit that, we need to remove this plug from the fuel burning heater itself, remove one of the blanking plugs from that, and then fit this pin. So we're going to do that now. This plug's just held in with two little plastic tangs. So you push them inwards and carefully ease the connector out. And as you look at the back of the connector, it's the bottom row and it's the second pin in that we need to insert this green terminal into. So, so if you look at the front of the connector, you'll notice there's two pink locking tabs. And it's the lower of the two locking tabs we need to slide over in order to access that pin. So if we look at this row here, there's a, a tiny little tab. If you depress that with a pick, the locking tab will slide over and we need it to go all the way to the end of the connector so that we can insert that pin. So I slide it across like that. So once that pink locking tab is pushed all the way over, you can move to the back of the connector and you'll see the second pin in, just need to remove this little blue grommet with a pick like that. Just come out. Now we can push the green wire into place with the locking tab on the terminal pointing downwards. And once that's in place, it should click when it's all the way home. Like that. Give it a little pull just to make sure it can't come back out. Go back over to this side of the connector and we need to push that locking tab back over to latch the pins in place. And once you've done that, you can now push this connector back into place on the fuel burning heater. It will latch in. So that's that wire connected. Second wire we're going to connect is the ground wire. And the kit comes with a ring terminal so you can attach it to this earth on the side of the body. You just need to bear back some of the insulation, crimp a ring terminal onto that and we can bolt it on. Just 
take off a bit of the insulation like that. Take your ring terminal, fit it over the wire. Once the ring terminal's on the end of the wire, take the crimpers, make sure it's lined up properly, crimp it on. So now we can undo this 10 millimeter ground nut Can route the uh, can route the black and white wire just between the plastic battery tray and the wing. Attach that to the ground post, and then refit the nut. Next. We can fit the feed wire. And the fuel burning heater controller gets its feed from inside the fuse box, so we need to take the lid off. So with the fuse box cover off, we can see there's two eight millimeter nuts on two posts here, and it's from one of these we're gonna take our feed from. But before we do that, we're gonna put an inline fuse on this feed wire, just in case anything goes wrong, it will pop the fuse instead of damaging anything. So. Just cut this wire with enough to spare and then can strip back both ends. And the end of this one. And now we've got a fuse holder the three amp fuse and a spade connector on either side. So we're going to crimp these two spade connectors on. That's one. That will run to the module. It's the next one. That will clip onto the other side of the fuse holder. And then finally, we need to put a ring terminal on this end, which is included in the kit. So just feed that onto the end of the wire. And then we can crimp that on. So once that's on, we can put this ring terminal over one of the posts on the fuse box and then connect our inline fuse. So remove one of the nuts, find the end of the red wire again, plug in the fuse. So once you've connected your fuse holder, you can take your little fly lead, plug that into the other side. And now we can connect the ring terminal to the post on the fuse box. nut back on the post and then tighten it down. So the final wire we need to connect on the wiring harness is the blue one which gets its trigger from the headlamp wiring uh, on that blue and pink connector that we had identified earlier but before we do that we're going to mount the module and connect the antenna so that we can make sure all the wiring runs together nicely along the inside of the wing to the front of the car. It's 
So this is the antenna that we need to connect to the module. This is the module. Before we fit the module, we need to undo these two screws and remove the face plate, which will allow us to fit the SIM card. So you need a little screwdriver. And then this plate will just slide forward along with the circuit board and you'll see the SIM holder just on top there. So the kit comes with a SIM card. It's really important not to lose the card that it comes with because you need the activation code to activate the SIM card so you can actually text it and fire up the heater. So now we need to pop the SIM out of this card. So take the SIM card and then slide the circuit board out of the module and you'll see the SIM card holder here. Just need to flip the little gate open, like so. Place the SIM card in, making sure it's the right way up. Once the SIM card's in place in its little tray, just flip the gate back over, clip it down. By sliding it forward. Once this SIM card's in place and the tray is closed, you can refit this board to the module. With that done, we can now mount the module. The best place to stick it on these is on top of the fuse box cover. So make sure the wires are routed nicely out of the fuse box and then clip the cover back in place. And the feed wire should follow the positive battery cable out of the fuse box. Take the connector again, make sure that the feed wire, the earth wire, the green wire to the fuel burning heater and the blue wire all have plenty of slack. Now we can mount the module and the module's mounted just with a bit of double sided sticky tape. couple of strips of that on there. And then you want to make sure the top of the fuse box is nice and clean so the tape sticks. Then stick the module down with the wiring harness connector pointing to the front of the car. And now you can plug the connector in. Let's 
two threads that engage in posts in the front of the module to make sure the connector doesn't vibrate loose. Sorry. And then you can take the roll of extra auxiliary wires, just poke them down the side. The inline fuse can stay inside the battery box. We need to route the blue, green and earth wires out through the side. There's a nice gap just between the battery box and the inner wing. So tuck them down there. Next, we need to mount the antenna on the front grille support and then we'll run the wires up to the module. So now take the antenna. We've cleaned up one of the front grille supports and put a piece of sticky tape on there. So now we're just going to mount the antenna, run the wires up to the fuse box. So that's now in place. So then we need to route these antenna wires up through the hole for the headlight, along the inner wing and into the battery compartment. And once they're tucked down there nicely, you'll notice there's one with a blue label, one with an orange label. And we need to put the blue label on the left hand post looking at the back of the module and the orange one on the right hand side. And they just screw into position. Any excess wire that you have here, we can curl round and cable tie up when we're finished. So the last thing to do is to connect the blue wire from the fuel burning heater control module. We need to run that down to the back of the headlamp connector, which we showed you at the beginning. Locate the blue wire with the pink trace. Use a really sharp knife to bear off some of the insulation. Open up the strands of the copper. We can then pass through the strip back wire on the blue wire from the module twist it around and then solder it all to make a good strong connection. Finally, re-insulating it with some insulation tape. So once that wire is connected in, we can chase all the wires back from the front of the vehicle up to the battery compartment, make sure they're all safely, securely tucked away and secured with cable ties to make sure they're not gonna rub or chafe on anything. We can then refit the battery compartment lid and test the system. So the headlamp's back in place. Just need to push the clips down. Steve's going to bring the grill back in and we can refit that. And the install's complete. So the fuel burning heater controller is a really good upgrade for Discovery 3. Not only does it let you warm the cabin up on a cold morning from the comfort of your own home, but also the engine will start more easily in cold weather because the block's already preheated through the coolant. And of course, because it has a SIM card inside, it can also act as a tracker. So to check out some other videos on fitting upgrades and accessories to your Discovery 3, have a look at the other videos in the Brit Park Workshop series.